Hey guys, welcome back to the Second Time Lucky Mining channel. In today's quick video, we are going to have a look at monitoring your application on the Flux network. If you like the Flux content, please like the video and maybe even consider subscribing to the channel. It will help me out a great deal. But enough of sharing my channel, let's jump into the content. Now, today's video is probably not going to be for everybody out there. It's really for people that have paid and are running applications on the Flux network. Now, what we are going to have a look at is how do I monitor that application on the Flux network? And what we're going to have a look at specifically specifically is where do I see the vital signs? How do I find the logs for my application that's running on the Flux network? And how do I see the CPU, RAM, SSD utilization of my app on the network? Potentially to spot if my application is sluggish or I potentially have over or unprovisioned my application on the Flux network. Now, enough talking about it. Let's jump on the computer and I'll show you how to monitor your application on the Flux network. Okay, so here we are on the computer. now. I'm gonna show you guys the three things that I use to monitor my applications on the Flux network. And again, if you're using something different, please specify in the comments because I'd love to learn some of the other things that you guys are using. But to run through it, what we are going to use is this cloud.runonflux.io page. This is a new page since Jetpacks. I'll show you guys what I do here. We'll obviously make use of the home.runonflux.io page. I'll show you guys what to do there. And this is really where you'll find the logs and look at the CPU utilization and things like that. And in order to log into these two tools, we will be making use of Zelcore to sign the specific message. Now, let's have a look at the first one, which is high level. So let's jump onto the Flux Cloud. Now, hopefully they add a dark mode specifically to this, but what I'm going to do is select login here on the top right. It's going to ask, you know, what is your Zell ID? So I'm just gonna click log on. That's gonna open up Zelcore see the pop-up come up and I'll have to sign this message. I'm gonna close up this, minimize it. I will probably use it again. And then in the D app section here, you will see all of the applications that I currently have got running on the Flux network. So you can see here, I've done some WordPress testing. I've hosted Ryland's website. I've tested some games. And what you can see is the last time that you've updated it, and has your app expired and what is the the last fees that you specifically paid so as you can see here this is just the last fee so um, you know if you make an update on the specifications on the website um, the fee sort of resets here so this is not what the actual application fee costs and if you wanted to have a look at that so if i just go to my um, it's not really the one that i wanted to select but if you just look at my UAT site here, um, and if I go to billing, here is where you'll find exactly what you've paid for and what the duration was. So you can see for a 30 day period, it cost me 50 cents. I've made a small update to the specifications and uh, that's potentially some of the things that I don't like about it. But if you make an update on the specifications, you get charged specifically for that. Um, so here you can sort of see what I've paid in the past. Now, if I go back to the D apps, um, the first thing that you would want to notice here and the first thing that I like to do when I monitor my application is have a look and see when is it expiring. So as you can see here, my WordPress site is expiring in 22 days and my main Flux website is still up and running. So here you can see that it's um, extended it for at least another year. Now, if I click on it, and again, I'll click on this here, this is really the first bit of monitoring that I'm going to do. So it gives you an HTTP status here of 200. That's not necessarily applicable to all of the applications that you've got. So depending on your application, I know some people that are running games, they don't get the status here. But, um, you know, if you're running a website like what I'm doing here, that is the first thing that tells you it's up and running or it's um, working the way that it's intended. Now, the other thing that I actually like doing here or like watching is having a look and see which is the nodes that has been assigned and sort of where are those nodes from a standpoint. So as you can see here, specifically for my Flux Node UAT website, I've got it on, um, you know, on all continents. And here you can see um, the different places that it are, that it exists around the world. So you can see in Finland, um, in Thailand, even in Russia, this is where my specific app is hosted at the moment. Okay, so now the next thing that I want to show you guys is how to see the log file and the actual monitoring on the node. Now, I'd love for that stuff to be within this page, but unfortunately it's not here yet, or maybe 
it is going to be in the future, I don't know. But what I like to do is go to this diagnostics. Now, my site is grossly over-provisioned, so it probably won't make a lot of sense. So let me just go back to the D apps and then have a look at something that is more uh, new and that I that I actually haven't provisioned, right? So let's have a look at the WordPress site that I have stood up. So I stood up a WordPress site. And again, I did a very bad job and hopefully I can make a video of that in the future. But what you'll see here, this is my D app specifically for WordPress to support the project. And again, if you look at the node assignment here, you can see it exists in Auckland. I don't know where this is for um, Wellington and Sydney. Sydney is probably the closest one to me. So if I go to diagnostics here again, as I mentioned before, you get a little bit of an overview. Now, if you need to go and monitor your specific application, unfortunately, you have to go to the actual node to see what's going on on the node. And for that, I'm going to click on Flux OS and it will open up that home that run on Flux page. So let me just select that. And as you can see here, it's opened up that specific node. And again, you will need to sign in. So let me just log in here, open up Zellcore. Once I've signed the message, you would see it's logged in. And now where you'll find your stuff is if you go to apps and go to local apps, and then you would see these are all the apps that's currently on this specific node. And you can see there's actually a couple of stuff. There's my WordPress site here. But if you then go to my local apps, and again, my local apps will be the local apps specific to the owner that's just signed in with the Zell ID. Again, that Zell ID, I'm the owner of that app. So if I go to my local apps, you'll see it's only the one here. Now you can remove it. You can do all sorts of things from here. Uh, but in this video, I'll focus on the monitoring side. So I'm going to select manage and manage app. And then what you will see is first off, if I go to log files and if you give it a second here, by the way, you can see how long it's been up and running here. So it's about 20 hours. Um, but as soon as I select log file, what will happen is it will open up the log file for your application on that specific node. So you just need to be a little bit patient and give it a sec or two. Yeah, I'm not sure why the log files didn't pop up, but what I've done is I've logged into another node here and um, I'll just jump back to that. So if I open up the log file here, you can see the last entries of the log file and the timestamp specifically for that. So here you can see the WordPress one is a little bit busier than uh, my typical Flux node app here because it's got a couple of components, right? It's got the WordPress component, it's got the database component here, and you can see various different uh, messages specifically to that and then it's got an operator what is also nice is you can actually download these files in case you wanted to have a look on your computer in excel or done some filtering and that type of stuff so that's quite cool now the other thing that i promised is uh, where do i see the resource utilization so you know is it over or under provisioned and specifically for that i'm going to select the monitoring um, option here and then if you just give it a little bit of time, you would see this is now where the stats comes up. So there's generally lots of different monitoring here. You can see the timestamp of it and then the CPU utilization. So as you can see here, specifically for the WordPress component, and again, you know, the WordPress site is, is a little bit more busy because it consists out of three components, um, you know, NGIX, it's the MySQL database and the operator that does the um, the various different things or does the syncing across the master and the slave nodes. But in any way, so what you can see here is the CPU utilization at specific points in time, the RAM utilization, the disk utilization, and the net IO. So it's, it's quite nice that you get a breakdown of this. And again, this is just a WordPress component. If I just go to the database, you can actually see the database performance. So it's actually quite nice that you can see that breakdown again. I think this is per minute. If we scroll a little bit down, it gives you sort of averages over an hour. So if I scroll a little bit down, here you can see um, more averages here at the bottom um, for the component. So it depends on what type of detail are you looking for to monitor. Now, there's various other things if I just scroll again to the top and the typical things that I like to do. And again, you can have a look at all of these options if, in case you wanted to, but you know, I mainly go to control here. And this is in case I've made a change to my Docker um, application. This is sort of where I do the hard redeploy. Um, you can start and stop monitoring. You can do various different things. 
something that I've done in the past. Also, depending on my monitoring results, I can then go ahead and update the specification. So that is what is quite nice about this. Um, even the WordPress site here, if you're not happy with the performance or you feel it's over or under provisioned, you can go ahead and adjust the resources depending on what you've seen from your monitoring, right? So if you see that, oh, hell, you've made a mistake, you completely under provisioned, you can just move these sliding scales um, and then calculate the compute message and go ahead as you would have done the first time. So it's really easy to um, you know, to update the specifications. So generally, that's what I do from a monitoring perspective, right? If in case I've got issues, I'll go and have a look at the log file. If somebody um, complains about the website being slow, or unresponsive, I potentially might um, redeploy it. I might have a look at the specifications. So depending on what your issue is, you can use this to log into the node and then see what is happening on the node. That's it for this video guys. If you've liked the video, please like the video and maybe even consider subscribing to the channel. If you didn't, please specify in the comments what you would like me to change. Otherwise, I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.